Now, what I'm going to get us to do is I'm going to read uh, the sentence which is at the bottom of each of these screens to remind us of what we've studied. Only you can't see the bottom of these screens because they're at floor level. But you've got the words in front of you. So, for example, we start uh, on page 12, uh, sorry, on page 8 uh, with the uh, material on God. And what I want us to do is I want us to turn and face the banner which, which is our section, and we'll all read together the word, just the sentence at the top. So under God, we'd read all together in a minute, because God has adopted us and his father to the fatherless, he's at the centre, which is the word there or at the bottom of the screen. Does everybody understand? Yes. So let's turn and face screen number one. It's here, and read with me. Because God has adopted us and his father to the fatherless, he is at the centre. Now let's turn to page 12 and turn towards the screen of the child. Where is that? Who can see that? Oh, over there. Thank you. So let's all turn over there with page 12 in front of us. Ready? Every child has inherent value and an unconditional right to holistic development. And then page 16, turning to the section on the family. Now, where is the... Oh, sorry, it's not 16. It's 18. Where is the banner on the family? Somebody please tell me. Where is it? Oh, right at the back there. Okay, so facing the back there, uh, slightly to my left, reading together the sentence on the family together. A healthy family is the best environment for a child to develop and thrive. And then on to page uh, 20, uh, 4... 24, the church. Where is, where's the church gone? The church is gone. We're here. You, you should all be saying, we're here. <laughs> we are the church. Where is the church? Oh, there, there is the church. Okay, we're here. Yeah, and there's the banner right over there. All together, the body of Christ is commissioned to care for children without parental care and has the capacity to lead the and global effort to end the situation of children living outside of family care. And then turning to the next section at the church, which was community. community, which is on page 30. Where's the community gone? Oh, right, there we are, to my right. Okay, all together. Broad scale collaboration is required to transfer these core values across societies and see transformations occur. And then our last uh, uh, section, which is on page 34. Where is, where's commission? Oh, it's here. Good. All right. So facing this banner together, the mission is immense. So we can only move forward with God's commission to present life in all its fullness to a nation in need of a father. Amen. Amen. Please sit down. Well done, everybody. That was great. That was a reminder of the material we've covered together in these last two days. Well done for your uh, hanging in there for that material. So let me read to you the summary uh, that I wrote for this session. It's in your books, as we've said, on page 34. And it just gives a simple summary of our time together and the word commission. Christian faith places the child in the human family as the best place for their flourishing and thriving. This flourishing involves physical protection and well-being, as well as emotional safety and life opportunities in education and employment. Now, now those sentences could probably be said of any United Nations secular organization working with children. So just that sentence is, is probably true for Pretty much every organisation that's a serious organisation about children. But now here's this next sentence. But it also involves spiritual wholeness. Being made in God's image, the child's relationship with him completes the holistic package of care that faith communities seek to provide. A neglect of this element of wholeness is to the detriment of the child and robs them of the spiritual resources needed for life in all its fullness, uh, which is a, a quotation there from scripture. Does anyone know where that, what scripture that references there in my notes? 
life in all its fullness. John chapter 10, verse 10. I am come that they might have life, and life in all its fullness. The needs of children worldwide are vast and complex. The causes of neglect and abuse are many and varied, deep-seated, and often embedded in political and social dysfunction, not to mention simple human selfishness. Faith communities embrace the invitation to spiritual regeneration as part of their divine commission. So this last section, handled simply and briefly now, commission, is a great reminder of the overall context in which we talk about child, which is the responsibility of faith communities to spread the faith. Remember, we thought of the church as a verb and not a noun involving transforming society. Our job is to preach and teach the good news and to make sure all of the world is made aware that Jesus Christ is not dead, his body having rotted in some Jerusalem hillside, but he's alive and risen from the dead. And it's our responsibility to get that message out, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the transforming power of his risen authority in our lives. And so we need to provide that information in order that children can be fathered in appropriate ways. The best way for that to happen in a societal sense is for the Great Commission to be fulfilled. And that is our mission to tell the whole world about God's justice, God's wrath with sin, God's hatred and enmity of evil, and God's rescue package in Jesus Christ, the saviour of the world back into prostitution, he's got to go and rescue her. I mean, it's a story which is an enormous mess. Isn't it a mess, the story of Hosea? Oh my goodness, what's going on there? And the people of Israel need to learn a lesson from this. God says to the prophet, I'm teaching the people through what's happened to you. And in 14 verse 3, uh, he asks that God will forgive them for their spiritual adultery illustrated by actual sexual adultery and he says no longer will we realize Assyria can save us we'll never again say our gods of things we've made in other words we're not going to go back to idolatry we're not going to do that for you in you the fatherless find compassion see what's the great message for the world that Christian faith brings it's that gods are everywhere but they're idols in the view of the Almighty God, because what idol, what God other than the Christian God promises to be father to the fatherless? None. None. And so what a celebration of fatherhood the Great Commission involves. It involves providing fathers to the world. We all need fathering, and God provides that by his great plan in his wondrous love and compassion for us. And right here in Hosea, in a story of sexual infidelity and betrayal and disappointment and, and sheer human sinfulness and mess, God says, never again tell me something you've made as an idol is going to rescue you. But I am a father to the fatherless. I am active. I am loving. And the Great Commission invites us to share that societal change and that loving fatherhood of God with a needy world. And we're brought back full circle by Matthew 18, verse 4, which is Jesus himself, who surely is our important guide, he's our saviour, he's our example. And we trust him and we listen to what he says. Therefore, whoever humbles himself, there's humility again, like this child, is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And so the child becomes the teacher. Because as we're like this child, we come and have an opportunity to enter all the glory that the kingdom of heaven has for us. And so my appeal to you is to share the good news, to be a missional community, to be a missional church, not to be a missionary in the old-fashioned sense of sending someone overseas to do a piece of work in another country, though that might be important. But tell every member of your church, every 
person who works in a hotel like this, every lawyer, every doctor, every restaurant worker, every teacher, that as they are in Christ, they're God's missionary agents where they are, to be his agents of goodness, to see society changed, so that ultimately, the very children we've been talking about are fathered and protected, and have the distinct Christian opportunity, this is what we offer that secular agencies don't, the spiritual renewal of the new birth, the chance for a brand new start spiritually, as well as socially and educationally. The chance to be born again and to know the living God for themselves. And that's our prayer, that we play our part as agencies, as churches and individuals in the great transformation of society, which is the fulfilling of the Great Commission. Amen. Amen.